Hey folks, this is Ray from DCRainmaker.com. Today I've got Garmin's newest wearable, the Vivo Move. Now this unit is a little bit different than a lot of their past watches in that it's actually really simplistic. Uh, it's only got a single button on it here, basically that kind of chrome or digital chrome style that you see in a lot of classical timepieces. This watch really falls in the footsteps of what Withings has done with their Withings Activity, activity Tracker. Uh, now that Activity Tracker is basically pretty straightforward. It's, it's designed to simply capture your steps and activity throughout the day. So in this case, on the unit itself, there's only two different dials of information. On the left hand side here is your step progress towards your goal for the day, so 0 to 100%. And on the right hand side is a move bar. Um, that move bar will remind you when you're inactive. So if you're sitting in a meeting for 45 minutes, you'll see it slowly creep up in red uh, until it fills the bar. In order to go ahead and re reduce that red, you're gonna go for a walk, about 100 to 200 meters to go ahead and clear the bar. Now there are three versions of the Vivo Move. The first is this uh, silicone band one called the Sport Edition. It has a bit of an outer plastic casing. Uh, the second version has a leather uh, sport or a leather band on it. Cost a bit more, uh, but it still has that plastic shell with a bit of a metal rim on the outside. And then finally, the highest end version has both a leather uh, strap as well as a full metal casing. Uh, so you see that, for example, on the gold as well as the steel options. Um, that's definitely their highest unit they have available. Now all three of these watches connect to your smartphone via Bluetooth Smart. Uh, there is no ability to connect to a heart rate strap, so it's a bit of a departure some, from some of Garmin's past products like the Vivo Fit line uh, that can go ahead and connect to an amp plus heart rate strap. For these, it's purely to count steps throughout the day. It also doesn't have Move IQ on it, which means it's not gonna go ahead and automatically recognize sports throughout the day. So with the Withings Activite, it does have that automatic sport recognition, as does a lot of other Garmin's wearables. Uh, this one leaves that out. So if you're looking for sports, you're probably gonna want some of their other watches, you know, like a um, Forerunner watch or a cycling watch to be dedicated towards that. Now, one of the challenges though with Garmin's current product lineup is that you can only have one activity tracker specified throughout the day. Um, that means that if you're using this as your activity tracker, if you go for a run, you don't get credit for those run on this watch or even on the app itself from a step standpoint. Uh, that's something they're looking to fix by the end of the year, but it definitely is a bit of a gap compared to Fitbit as well as Withings. Um, and even Polar too has that option to go ahead and combine all the different products um, into a single uh, dashboard view. Like the Withings Activite watch, uh, this doesn't have a rechargeable battery. So it's gonna have a single coin cell battery inside that lasts about a year. And then after that, you're gonna go to bring it to a jeweler or someone that's gonna take this apart, put a new coin cell battery in and get it sealed back up again. You're good to go for another year. Uh, that is a bit different than, you know, some of their other wearables in the past where you could swap out that coin cell battery yourself. Um, while you probably could do that with enough uh, tools on Amazon or whatnot, um, I wouldn't really trust that because of that waterproofing piece. The unit is waterproof to 50 meters, so that means you can go ahead and you don't have to worry about showering or anything like that with it. Uh, but it's something that once you take it to a, or once you get that battery swapped out, you want to ensure that a, somebody who knows what they're doing is going to go ahead and swap that battery. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Garmin certainly isn't the first to this camp of doing basically an activity tracker and a stylish watch. Uh, it's been almost two years since Withings released their Activity Tracker. They've since come out with a couple of new variants of it, both a lower priced one as well as uh, some additional band options. Uh, the main difference though, between these two units is really the size. In the case of the Withings watch, it's quite a bit smaller than the Garmin. Uh, that's great though if you're a smaller wrist or a female or just want something that you know sits a bit more unobtrusive on your wrist, whereas with the Garmin, it's, it's a little bit larger. Um, personally, I like the larger style of the Garmin unit on my wrist compared to the Activite, um, which I really love the Activite watch. And I think, you know, from a technical standpoint, um, the Activite has more features in it behind the scenes, uh, but it's something that, you know, you have to balance between your style preferences and maybe some of the features that you have there. Last but not least, while the three different versions have different stylings of the actual unit itself, uh, the watch bands are all standard 42 mil watch bands, which means you can swap them out for both the other Garmin units or other Garmin bands as well as other ones on the market. Um, so you can go ahead and get you know, a certain case style now and then change it out later on. Stay tuned to the channel over the next couple weeks and expect a full in-depth review after I've used it for a little bit longer. Um, go ahead and hit the like button down below or subscribe to the channel for future updates. Thanks for watching.